stepped out of heaven and you came to this earth thank you that you sent your son Jesus to come and be with us because you love us God Lord your word reminds us that you love the people of this world so much that you gave your one and only son that if we would put our belief in him we would not perish but have everlasting life Lord we come to you today with thankfulness in our in our hearts. Words of praise on our lips, God. We lift up the name of Jesus. Would you just do that for a moment with me? Just right where you're at, just begin to give him praise. Tell him, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for being good, God. We love you. We worship you. You're worthy of our praise, Lord. We celebrate you today. Celebrate your goodness. Thank you, Jesus. 
Well, here in a moment, we're going to receive communion together. And if you don't have the elements with you, would you just raise your hand up and one of our ushers will come by and give those to you. Raise your hand. We want everybody to be able to receive today. And I love what this meal represents. This meal represents the body of Jesus. Jesus gathered with his followers for the Passover meal. And they had bread on the table, which was customary. And they had wine on the table, which was customary. And Jesus took the opportunity to use both of those elements to help them understand something very powerful. He took the blood or the the wine and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant. God is making a new covenant with us through the blood of Jesus for the forgiveness of our sins. A covenant is that agreement that he's going to be our God. And that he's going to overlook all of our wrongdoings through the shed blood of Jesus. And then Jesus took the bread and he broke it, which was customary. But in breaking it, he was able to say, this is my body, which is broken for you. And I want you, when we think about eating this meal today, I want you to think about the hand that was pierced by the nails on the cross. The feet that were pierced by the nails on the cross. The side that was pierced by the spear of the soldier. And I want you to remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for you. Before he went to the cross, he was whipped and he was beaten. And the prophet Isaiah foretold us, he said that by his stripes, we are healed. Amen. Today, may the broken body of Jesus bring healing to you emotionally, physically, spiritually, There may be some broken areas in your life. And right here for a moment, I want us to just be quiet before the Lord. And I want you to think about that. What what area of my life do I need the Lord to touch today? Where are there some things that are still broken in me, God? And as we receive today, may your body heal us, God. Your broken body that was given so that we may be whole. Let's go ahead and eat together. Thank you, Jesus. And as we come to this cup, it represents the shed blood of Jesus that was poured out for the forgiveness of my sins, your sins the sins of the world. All who would come to this meal, we could remember what Jesus has done for us. And just for a moment, I want to ask you, what sin has Jesus removed in your life through the shedding of his blood? What things are laying there at the foot of the cross that you no longer have to carry anymore? How has the Lord set you free from who you once were so that you could become who you are today? And as we drink this, we remember that there is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the broken body of Jesus. And Lord, just like your word tells us, we do this today to remember you. Let's drink together. thank you for your broken body and your shed blood thank you for the opportunity to share this meal with my family Lord today we celebrate you and remember your goodness God we're calling on your name because Jesus you're the same yesterday today and forever and we put our trust in you and we worship you amen Amen. come on can we give him some praise and tell him thank you we love you Lord Let's worship him.
the same Oh, you're the same, same God You've always been there You've always been loving and gracious and good Yeah, your promises are good our hands and we sing our praises to you, Jesus. Mm, you're freeing us. Mm. We call upon your Holy Spirit. You freed the captives then. You're free in hearts right now. You are the same God. You are the same God. You touch the lepers then. I feel your touch right now. You are the same God. You are the same. You're the same God. You're the same.
he's gonna move again Oh, we call upon the name of Jesus Rain came, wind blew But my house is built on you And I'm safe with you Would you lift out your hands as if you're going to receive something? Can we just sit in the throne room right now? Would you just picture that? Would you close your eyes? Would you picture you're sitting in the most beautiful room that you've ever seen? Stained glass windows around, marble floor, and Jesus is just sitting on the ground with you. And your hands are out, your hands are open. And he holds your hands right underneath. He says, I just want to be with you. You don't fail. Oh, you never fail. You don't fail. No, you can't fail. You don't fail. No, you. Oh, and you won't He can't fail No, it's not in his nature He can't fail Oh, he never will He can't fail No, he won't And you don't Mm -hmm. 
Come on, we're going to sing that bridge again. Rain came and wind blew, but my house is built on you. And I'm safe right here with you. And I'm going to make it through. Rain came and wind blew, but my house is built on you. And I'm safe, so safe with you. I'm going to make it. Sing, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it through. Because my house is built on you. Yeah, I'm going to make, I'm going to make it through. Because my house is built on you. Christ is my firm foundation. He's the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. And He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. Tell it to the depths of your heart tonight. He won't fail. He won't fail. Lord, we thank you today that we serve a God that is worthy of our trust, a God that does not fail, that is true to his word, that your word does not come back void. Lord, today, would you speak to us? Would you speak to areas that need to be healed? Today, would you speak a word that forever impacts our hearts? We are open. Right now, would you say, I'm open? Would you say, I'm open? I am open to you doing something in me. Would you change us in Jesus' name? We all said together, amen. Well, God is good and all the time. Come on, would you thank Jesus for being a good God? Come on, there's awesome people around you. Would you say hi to someone, maybe hug someone that you haven't seen and then find your seats. And then he says, please don't. I said, what, dude? Like, I ain't got no moves or something, man. Come on, man. Oh, I'm just kidding. Hey, well, welcome, guys. We're glad you're here. My name's Mike. This is Alex. And we just want to welcome you. Hey, if you're a first-time guest, thanks for coming and hanging out with us. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here. And we don't take that lightly. We've been thinking of you, and we always have a special gift just for you. If you haven't received that yet, make sure that you stop by the welcome table on the way out and pick that up. We got a special gift just for you. And if you could do me a favor, grab one of the connect cards from the seat back in front of you and fill that out if you have not yet. Or if you have and you're updating information, you could use that. You could also sign up for events and things like that. The connect card is the way that we communicate with you. Uh, we also have
have a weekly email that we would love to be able to add you to that so you could just stay in the loop of what's going on here at the church. And it's just our way to connect with, with everybody. So welcome. So glad you guys are here. And we want to celebrate our first week down of our small group campaign, The Chosen. Um, something I didn't mention last time that, that Jen said in the service until you'll hear it today is it's, it brings us together in unity. And I think what's important for me is, it's actually special in my heart, one of the first things that got Crystal and I connected into this church was going to a small group at the Hoyt's house. Uh, and it was amazing. It was, it was really, well, actually, sorry, it wasn't at their house. They led it. It was at uh, uh, River West. Uh, anyways, long story short, I recommend it because we, we got so connected with people and we saw this church cared about reaching out and doing life in circles, not in rows here on Sunday, which is huge. Um, so, you know, if you haven't signed up for the one this time around, you can still put it on a connect card, put small group. We can try and fit you in, get you dialed in. We do them twice a year, so you can wait till the next one. That's fine too. Um, but I can't stress enough how awesome it is to get to know people in a smaller group setting, especially with tying it into our Sunday service. That's awesome. How many of you guys like good music? Who likes good music? Well, we have a special event coming up hosted by our Center for Life Choices. We have a concert, Celebrate Life concert. It's going to be at 7 o'clock p.m. on April 18th out at Grace Church in Kelseyville or right here in Ukiah on April 19th uh, at New Life Church, which is over uh, behind Burger King in the Oak Manor area. Um, both of those concerts are going to benefit the uh, Center for Life Choices. There's also going to be an amazing testimony by a young lady, 19 years old. She's going to bring it and inspire you guys. It's going to be a great time to get together and celebrate with some of the rest of our, our church family in the area, and then also learn how we could help support the Center for Life Choices and help make a difference in young ladies' lives that maybe you're dealing with some unplanned pregnancies or need some next steps in that area, and it's a way that we could love on them and help be a part of what God is doing in their life. So I want to encourage you guys, mark your calendar now, uh, make it out, come and hang. It's free. It's a free event. So, so bring the whole family, and let's go have some fun and let's enjoy ourselves uh coming up may 18th at 11 a.m we have ladies tea hey, those of you that, that was not enough I'm a little louder than that <laughs> those of you there that was like two that were excited yeah, yeah i guess i guess it's gonna be not that good no i'm kidding tea and so crumpets, what, what's cool please. about this is it's not just a little oh we're gonna have, get together have tea you know this whole place turns into a tea room or, or yeah the tea room they do a lot of decoration a lot of prep uh <laughs> just remember pinky eye bro pinky yeah, yeah exactly the whole pinky time <laughs> Uh, it's also going to be, uh, our, the speaker is going to be our own Caitlin Volman, so that's going to be huge. Woo-hoo! Yep. So um, it costs $20. Uh, you can bring that to the welcome table or put it in an envelope and, and give it to the ushers that go by. Um, if you have questions about it, um, ask the welcome table as well. It's a good time. Um, it's also a great time to invite somebody that's new to come to the church, maybe not on a Sunday, but in a, a group setting where they can kind of see it a little less pressure. So we always say, who are you going to bring? Be thinking about who you're going to bring, right? Hey, today at 2 o'clock p.m. is the second part of our flow track class. Flow track is a way that we get connected here at the river. We, we have it broken up in three parts, know, grow, and flow. Last week was know, where you get to know the church, know the heart of who we are, the DNA of how we function as a church body. And today we're going to be in part two, grow, which is all about developing good spiritual habits. How many of you guys know that we got to have some good habits? Who's got bad habits? Raise your hands. Come on, you better be throwing your hands up, otherwise no lion in church. Come on. We all have bad habits. We need to develop some good spiritual habits that will help us to grow in our faith daily. If you didn't start on part one, this is what I love about the river. This is how the river flows. You could jump in the water at any point in time, right? So if you didn't go to part one, you can come to part two. All we ask is that you circle back around and take part one when you can. So come today at two o'clock, especially if you're newer to the church, you just want to kind of learn more about how we function and what's going on. It's a great opportunity. So 2 o'clock p.m. today, go get some lunch, come back and be with us, okay? And we're going to continue to worship through our tithes and offerings. If you're new here, feel free to let that bucket pass right by you. There's no pressure to give. Um, Our verse today is going to be out of Proverbs um, 11, 24 through 25. It says, there is one who scatters yet increases more, and there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. Something I love about our attitude towards giving here at the river is we hold our hands out in front of us. We don't hold what we have dear to us, right? Everything that we have was given by him in the first place. So we cheerfully give back because we know that he's going to take what we give back and use it again to bless the next person and the next person and the next person. So ushers, why don't you go and come forward? Lord, we thank you so much that we can gather here in your presence. 
that we can give freely what you've already given to us and give it back to you to further your kingdom, not only here in the river, Lord, but in our community, in Ukiah and Mendocino County. Lord, we're so happy that you are a lamp and a light that brought us here, and we want that to be the same for others. So we give freely, and and we love what you are doing with um, the gifts you've given us. And Lord, I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's so good to be together. You know, I was thinking about um, the scripture. If you're a part of our reading plan, if you're reading scripture alongside of many of us, we're in first, uh, we read 1 Corinthians chapter 16 this morning. And Paul, this is not even in my message, ah! um, but I wanted to tell you how I felt about you. Paul was saying to the church in Corinth, that he loved being with them and that he wanted to stay longer than usual. He was saying, hey, I want to stay um, for the winter months with you if the Lord allows. And I just caught that as, man, he loved his church. He loved the people that he did life with. So I just wanted to share that that's my same heart, is that we love doing life with all of you, and um, we just love you as, a, as the church. Um, don't you love being here? I love being here. So anyway, that's how I was feeling. I was gleaming in my um, heart. But I I just want to pray before we watch this clip. I wanted to cast a little vision of The Chosen with with you. Um, We are in a small group campaign. We do two of these a year, spring semester and a fall semester. And we ask the Lord, like, what are you saying? Because there's purpose behind everything that we do. And so um, what is the purpose? What's the reason? The last one was the heart for the house, getting a glimpse of God's heart for his house. And this, this uh, round is about getting a heart for his word. And so um, how we came about this was we, sh- we showed a clip last year at some point from The Chosen. Um, if you were here, it was Ma- um, the woman at the well, you know, John chapter 4. And I remember someone coming and saying, where is that in the Bible? I want to read more about that. And that's when we knew that God is using this, um, this TV show to just ignite God's people to be more hungry after his word. And ultimately, that's what we want. We want people to fall in love with God's word. And so as we open up this clip, I want you to get a picture of what we're about to dive into his word. Are you ready for it? All right, let's watch. I have a question for you. For me. I don't have many answers, but I'm listening. Do you want to be healed? Who are you? We'll get to that later. But my question remains. Will you take me to the water? Look, I'm having a really bad day. You've been having a bad day for a long time. So? Sir, I have no one to help me into the water when it's stirred up. And when I do get close, the others Step down in front of me. And so... Look at me. Look at me. That's not what I asked. I'm not asking you about who's helping you. Or who's not helping. Or who's getting in your way. I'm asking about you. I've tried. For a long time, I know. And you don't want false hope again, I understand. But this pool, it has nothing for you. It means nothing. And you know it. But you're still here. Why? I don't know. You don't need this pool. You 
only need me. So, do you want to be healed? So let's go. Get up. Pick up your mat. And walk. Free to walk, like he said. Don't forget your bed. Why does this matter? Because you're not coming back here. That life is over. Everything changes now. here today to receive a seed from you. We ask that it would take root what you want us to receive from you and let it produce great fruit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Would you open up your Bibles to John chapter 5? If you don't have your Bible or your iPhone, um, you can look at the screen. We're going to start in verse chapter 1. John 5, chapter 1, or verse 1, it says, Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish festivals. Now there is in Jerusalem near the sheep gate a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonnades. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie, the blind, the lame, the paralyzed. One who was there had been invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and he learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked, do you want to get well? Verse 7, sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. I want to stop there for just a second. He's referring to some water here. Now, if you have and are looking at the New King James Version or the King James Version, you will see verse 4 in those versions and not in the other versions. And in those versions, you will see that an angel came, stirred up the water in the pools. So let's show a picture of what... Um, the Bethesda pools looked like back in Israel. So the southern pool is where these people were lying. The northern pool is where the water would be caught. And because of these pools, they would need living water, natural waters to flow into the pool. So in these two versions, it, and we can leave that up for just, oh, and that's what it looks like now. So one day when we go to Israel, it's going to happen. We're praying for them right now. But um, that, let's go back to that. I liked that. Um, this is what it looks like now um, in Israel, but let's go back to the first one. And so at the lower pool is where this man lied, uh, laid. And so, um, so in, in these two versions, New King James and King James Version, it says the angel came, stirred up the water. People would jump into the pool and were healed. Now, whether the angel came and did this or not, some believe it's superstition. Some believe that actually this was an angel that came at times and stirred up the water. Whether that happened or not, because I do believe absolutely in angels, I do believe that they, um, they come into situations, but they are also not the Savior, amen? And people were looking to angels for their healing. This is where Jesus comes onto the scene, okay? So um, as far as the footnote that was added to the King James and New King James Version, that was originally a footnote so that we could understand verse 7. Because when, let's go back to, please, um, John 5, in verse 7, the man responds to Jesus, when the waters are stirred up, 
I am not able to get in there. Everyone else goes before me. And so the writers are saying, hey, just so they understand the context, this is why he was saying what he was saying. Are you following me? Okay, good. All right, so now let's go back to verse 8. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Verse 9, at once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. The day on which this took place was a Sabbath, and so the Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, it is a Sabbath, the law forbids you to carry your mat. But the man replied, the man who healed me, made me well, said, pick up your mat and walk. So I just did what the the man who healed me said. Okay, another note, it was the Sabbath. However, the law did not forbid people to pick up their mat. That was not part of the law. A lot of times, uh, people in the religious sector, they like to add on some stuff, okay? Today, that still happens. We like to add on some extra rules where the Lord says, this is the law, this is all I said, okay? Honor me above all else, and then the list goes on. But the the religious people were trying to catch him into something. This guy knew he wasn't breaking the law. He said, look, I just have been healed, and I'm following what the Savior told me. I'm getting up my mat, and I'm walking. So that's the, the passage that we're going to refer to today. So as scripture says, a multitude of people, um, some say a great crowd, a, a lot of people were around this pool. They were waiting for their healing. How I look at it is the outcasts of society, okay? So if we pictured it today, you can envision what an outcast in society might look like to you. All of these people were hanging around who were um, with ailments and they wanted healing in their life. So this is the picture that we see in scripture. Imagine the desperation and the hopelessness that these people might have felt. Imagine the hopelessness that this man who was with this disability per se for how long? 38 years. He was with this for 38 years. Now, we don't know if he was born this way, but what I do know is in in scriptures with people who have disabilities or something wrong with them, such as a blind man, um, I think in John 9, it says that this man was blind from birth. A lot of times it will let us know if they were born with this ailment. such also the woman with the issue of blood. She was not born with this issue. It said she, has, she had been suffering for 12 years, right? So that leads me to believe that this person who was paralyzed or lame of whatever disability he had, he, had, he was not born with it. So something happened in his life where he became lame. Jesus sees this man. Jesus sees this man. Again, among all the multitudes of people, Jesus sees this man. He he asks him a seemingly simple question. He says, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? And if we, when we remember the scripture, how does the man reply? With excuses. He, he replies with a bunch of, uh, I can't get healed because dot, dot, dot. He says, I can't get healed because all these people, they jump in before me. No one will lift me up and bring me into. He's trapped in his current situation at the moment, unable to change it on his own. On his own. So he sees, right? He's trapped. He's locked into a situation. How many of us have been trapped in some circumstances? I mean, I've been there. I've felt it. We have felt trapped at some point in our life, and maybe potentially unable to see beyond, unable to see a way out of the circumstance that we're in. Maybe you have been struggling with a particular issue for so long that it has become a part of your identity. It has become a part of who you are. I'm just going to live like this. Is this what it is for me? Or maybe, perhaps, you're blaming others. You're saying, it's not my fault I'm not getting healed. It's their fault I'm not getting healed. And we begin to put our blame and our lack of healing on other people. Have you ever been there? 
You see, that is a lie from the enemy from the pit of hell, I want you to know. It is not someone else's fault that you're not walking into your destiny. God has a plan. If we were, look at his word, they're what? They're good plans. They're not to harm you. They're to give you a hope and a what? future. So it is no one else's fault that you are not walking into the plans that God has for you. No one, hear me today, no one can hinder you from your destiny with God. No one can rob you from the plans and purposes that God has for you. You're not the exception to the power of God. Amen? You're not the exception to the power of God. God can heal you and there can be breakthrough in your life if that's what you're praying for today. You see, change is possible. Healing is possible. But, and with my first point, it requires us to embrace it. It requires us to embrace it. We have to embrace change for healing. We have to be willing to embrace the change if we want the healing. We have to let go of our old ways. We have to let go of our old identities we have to let go of our old mindsets, and we have to start believing for the new life that's available to us. We have to start believing that there is a future where we are no longer defined by our ailments. Amen? We have to believe it. We have to know God's word. How do we begin to believe it? By knowing God's word. We got to know what he says about his kids. Amen? We got to know what he's saying about us. You see, the man by the pool had been invalid for 38 years. That's a long time. 38 years. Some of you are not even that old. 38 years. He probably accepted his condition as a permanent plan. Just gave up. But then Jesus came on the scene. I love it, and I love how they depict, oftentimes in these scenes, Jesus will just get right on their level, eye to eye. And look at him, and eyes are the windows to the soul, right? He looks down him in his eyes, and he says, do you want to get well? And at that moment, he was given a choice. How many of you remember the moment where you gave your life over to the Lord? You had a choice. And we will come from time to time at a moment, a crossroads in our life, so to speak, whether it's given our life to the Lord or wanting a breakthrough in our life where we come to a crossroads where we just have to make a choice. We have to make a choice. You see, he could choose to remain as he was. He, said, he could have said, no, I'm just going to wait for the pool. I'm going to wait till something happens here at the pool. I'm, I'm waiting for that. But Jesus came onto the scene and he chose to embrace the possibility of change. Jesus is asking us the same thing today. Jesus is asking us, do we want to get well? Do we want an area of our life to change? Do we want to release that thing? Do we want to surrender that thing in our life and give it completely to him? But it requires us to confront our fears. You see, it's not always an easy thing. Yeah, yeah, God, I want it. Yeah, here, I, I, want, I want change. I want this. It's not always that easy, huh? Sometimes it's harder than we speak about because it requires us to confront our fears. It requires us to confront our insecurities. It requires us to confront possibly some doubts. It also requires us to come up to the fear of the unknown, right? I, this is what I'm used to, as dysfunctional as it might be. I'm scared of the other side. That is the fear of the unknown. But this is what I'm used to. I don't want to move from this. I'm comfortable with this disability or this hang-up, so to speak. But if we want the change, we've got to be ready for the uncomfortability Amen. and to step out of our comfort zones. We are, we've got to be willing to embrace the unknown and not be afraid of it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So here's the good news. We don't have to do it alone. That's good news. Amen? Hey, Jesus is right there just in the same way he looked at that lame man. He's looking at us and he's saying, hey, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? He's ready and waiting for us to say yes. He is here to guide us and support us and help us. 
He is there to give us the strength and embrace the change with us. Because reality says that change is scary. What, I, I mean, I think about growing pains, right? We want to grow, continue to get better, but in reality, there are growing pains that take place. It's also necessary for us in order to get to the other side. I wanted to share a story about, and Mike and I are very transparent about the fact that we get outside help from time to time in our lives for people to speak into our lives. I mean, if you have ever driven a car, you know every now and then it needs a tune-up, right? It needs an oil change. You know, there are things, cars don't run forever. Um, every now and then it just needs some little, you know, something, something to, to make it last longer, run longer, right? In the same way are our lives, we need a tune-up every now and then. And sometimes it takes outside people to speak the truth in our life, okay? If you're married today, I would encourage you to, if you ever need to speak to someone, speak to someone who loves you both, amen? Speak to someone who's on your team, so to speak, who will speak into your life for the succession of your life or your marriage. And then also, whether you're married or not, speak to someone who will point you to Jesus. Speak to someone who will lead you to the man who will change you, amen, or help you change. There are times um, in our lives who we have sought outside perspective, so to speak, because, you know, when you're in it, you don't always see it. And I'm not oblivious that I can, there can be, you know, I can do stuff and Mike can do stuff that, you know, not only we can, you know, hurt one another, but even our children unintentionally, we can hurt our children or wound our children. So we've even raised our kids up that this is just normal. We, we invite people in when we have a little bump in the road or maybe something just doesn't rub right. And so I remember, you know, one time um, when Caitlin and Caleb went and talked with someone, I remember talking to Caleb or Caitlin and I said, hey, I don't want to know anything about what you guys talked about. But I asked her, I said, is there anything that I need to ask forgiveness for? Is there anything that maybe I've done that I could change in? You know, because I, again, I'm not oblivious that I, as a parent, as much as I love God and her, have not wounded her, right? And so I, I asked her that at one point. And out of that was a time where I realized when I went to counseling about 10 years ago, I, had, I struggled with something with my mom. And in my counseling session, I was talking with my counselor, and my counselor was asking me about how my mom was raised. And my mom um, was raised by a, a raging alcoholic, and then she married an alcoholic who also had an addiction to gambling, which destroyed our family. And so, and also my mom was the oldest of six kids, and so once her parents divorced, she kind of carried the load of the six kids being the oldest child. And so a lot of that, you know, naturally, as anyone could imagine, there was hurt, there was probably resentment, and there, you know, and out of pain, sometimes we react to things in certain ways. And so as I was processing this with my counselor, he, like, unveiled something to me to be able to see in my mom's life. Because what I was focused on was my own pain. I was focused on how I was feeling and how, how maybe um, I was raised and I saw something that I didn't like, right? But then I got a picture into her world, and my mom didn't even have to be there with me. I immediately forgave her and was healed. You see, the thing is, is the enemy wants to keep us trapped. He wants to keep us trapped in our past and in our pain. But there is available to us healing and a new life. The question is, are you ready to participate in your change in your own healing? Are you ready to participate in your own change in your own healing? When Jesus asked the man, do you want to get well? It was not a casual inquiry. It's a probing question that invites the man into the process. He invites him and he is somewhat examining 
his readiness for a new life. That's our next point. Is at times we need to examine our readiness for a new life. Are we ready? I think about David. God, search my heart. Search my heart, God. I say it with my mouth, but search my heart. Is there anything in me that doesn't please you? What is it that I need to release? What is it that I need change in? The man's response to Jesus' question reveals a lot about his state of mind. He doesn't directly answer Jesus' question. Instead, he explains his predicament. He explains his predicament. Others won't help me in the pool when the water is stirred. I'm trying, but I can't get in. Someone else is always ahead of me. He focuses on the obstacles in his way. That's where his focus is. Not on the healing that's available to him. He focuses on the obstacles. This looks like he is stuck to his condition, and he struggles to envision the life that is available to him. He struggles to envision it. How often have we all focused so much on the obstacles, right? The things that are standing in our way rather than the opportunities that are available to us. How often? We've all done it at times. My question to you is, are your circumstances defining you? Or do we understand that we are not defined by our circumstances? Are your circumstances defining you and dictating your life? Or do you understand that your circumstances don't have to define you? Why? Because it says in Scripture that we are more than conquerors through Christ. We are more than conquerors through Christ, which means that we can press on. I want to show you a picture of this man. His name is Nick. I can't pronounce his last name, so I will just leave it at Nick V. He's a minist- his ministry is called um, Life Without Limbs. Thank you, babe. Uh, and this man was born with no legs and no arms. He, com- he tried to commit suicide at 10 years old in a bathtub. Um, he thought he, wa- he had no purpose in life. You know, as you can imagine, I mean, he was raised in a, in a godly family, and his parents loved him with all of the, you know, their heart. It wasn't his, his family, but it was his circumstance that he was focused on. And then at that moment in the bathtub, he said that he remembers envisioning, like, it, like the Lord gave him a vision, if he did commit suicide, how hurt his mom would be. And so he came up and took breath. So he he has an amazing testimony about how the Lord began to reveal to him his purpose in life. He thought, because the enemy planted seeds of no one will love you, no one would ever want to marry you, you have no purpose. And as he began to work through all of that and hear from the Lord, actually, Um, he began to receive freedom and started a ministry where he's ministering across the world. Here's a picture of his current family. They're probably a little older than that now. But his ministry is impacting multitudes. Why? Because he did not allow his circumstance to dictate his future. He just didn't. How are we responding to our circumstances? One of the quotes that Nick um, shares is, often people ask how I manage to be happy despite having no arms and no legs. The quick answer is that I have a choice. I can be angry about not having limbs, or I can be thankful that I have a purpose. I choose gratitude. Are we ready to take responsibility for our part in our circumstances and in our situations? Are we ready to take responsibility for our part? Basing our healing on other people brings helplessness. I think about that man. He was probably feeling very helpless because his eyes were looking at the people and the pool. He was feeling helplessness. 
This mindset is truly a barrier to his readiness for a new life. It's a reminder to us that while we can't control everything and everyone in our life, we can control how we respond. Amen? We can absolutely control how we respond to everything that's going on in our life. We can choose to be active participants in our own healing rather than passive bystanders. We can choose that life, so to speak, right? We can choose that route. We can choose that road of healing. You know, oftentimes when we're um, sharing a word, we share what the Greek meaning of a word is. And I'm going to share a a Greek meaning with you. But before I do that, I want to share a little. So my youngest daughter is Abigail. Abby, we call her. And she's in college right now. And she is the one that has the most teenage quotes that I have ever heard in my life. I mean, I don't know. She's always shouting, period. I don't know. Some of you teenagers might relate. But like, period means like, right on. Or, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, teenagers in the house. But like, Period means like, yeah, that's right, Um, or whatever. You know, there's just like all these catchphrases out there that this generation is speaking, and it's fine. I don't care. I said stuff too, totally awesome, whatever. What you know, um, tubular, whatever. You know, whatever it, (laughs) tubular, (laughs) whatever it is. Right. Every generation has their own word, but that's not the real meaning of the word. You hear me? I want to know, what, what did you really, like, there are some new words that I'm all, what does that really mean? Like, what are you meaning? And that's why we share the Greek word with you, just so you know. Because the, the New Testament was originally written in Greek, right? And so I want to know, I don't know about you, but I want to know what did they originally mean, right? And so that's why we share the Greek words with you. But this Greek word, hugies. That's what get well is. And it means in the Greek to make whole. To make whole. To restore to health. You see, this is suggesting that Jesus' question to the man about getting well isn't only physical. It's not just physical. He's asking him, do you want to be whole in your body, soul, and spirit. Do you want to be whole? You see, I I know this because in verse 14, and we're not going to get there, but feel free to read it on your own. Jesus encounters him again in the temple, the church, and he tells him, hey, you've been made well, but don't sin anymore because it could be worse for you. Basically addressing a heart issue. He needed to remind the man, it's not just about your physical healing. It's also a heart issue. I'm healing you, now go and sin no more. Jesus told the man, get up, pick up your mat and walk. And that is literally a call to action. It's a call to action. It's a challenge to us and that man to take responsibility and to partner with him for his own healing. To rise above the obstacles rise above his circumstances, and to step into new life. You see, this command isn't just for this man, but also for us. It's also for us. It's a reminder that we are not helpless victims of our circumstances. We have the power to rise above them and to take control of our lives, and we can experience new life. Do you believe that today? We can experience new life. You see, this man He chose to participate with Jesus. What he did was he put his faith into action. Amen? He didn't just say, yeah, I'm a believer. Yeah, I go to church. I believe. When the rubber met the road, he put his faith into action. He got up. He got up. He took action. He was immediately obedient to Jesus after he told him that. He is ready for his new life. He did not hesitate or make any more excuses. And he got up, picked up his mat, and walked. So we have to embrace change for healing, examine our readiness for a new life. We've got to put our faith into action. And then the last point is this. 
we need to put into priority that engaging with different people post healing is vital. Engaging with different people after our healing is vital. Who is it that is influencing your life? Who is it that is adding to your circumstances, right? This man encountered the living God. And Jesus asked a simple question, but it was profound. Do you want to be made whole? It challenges us to confront our fears, yes, our pride, and even our weaknesses. And I don't know about you, but we all have some weaknesses. I call them blind spots, okay? We've not, none of us have arrived. We've all got some blind spots. And if you don't know what your blind spot is, ask your spouse or your kids or your closest friends because we all have an area that needs to get whole. We are continuously, glory to glory, getting better. We're continuously getting more and more healed. The layers continue to get pulled off. It's easy to get comfortable in our dysfunction. It's easy to get comfortable in our weakness. So what is the one thing, what weakness do you need to be whole in? Where do you need the Lord to make you whole today? Where do you want to be made well? In James 5.16, James tells us to confess our sins one to another, to ask for prayer, and then the byproduct is healing. There's something powerful in the body. There's something powerful going to a Christian counselor that as we confess our hangups, our hurts, our habits, one to another, and the ultimate, inviting the ultimate healer in, it, it is said in his word, and his word does not come back void, that we will be healed. We will be healed. So some of us need to make a call, um, perhaps break up with a boyfriend or a girlfriend. I don't know what it is that the, that the call is for you today. Maybe sign up for a small group. Get in a life-giving community where you don't feel alone. Whatever it is to help you on your wholeness journey, you need to do. If you want the other side. You know, there's a quote by C.S. Lewis, and he said, you can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. The Lord is saying what happened is done and said. That's why the rearview mirror is smaller than the, the windshield. Amen? Right. The rearview mirror is there, and you could glance, but don't keep your eyes on the back. Don't keep looking back to where you came from. That's a piece of it, but keep your eyes ahead. God's got good things for you. God's got good things for us. God's got good things for this church. Amen. So Jesus is saying, Partner with me in your healing process. You're not alone. You're not doing it by yourself. I've got a perfect will for your life. And a lot of that looks like getting the mind of Christ. A lot of it looks like getting the mind of Christ and, and changing the way you think. You know, Romans 12, 2 says, don't copy the customs or behaviors of this world, but let God transform you into a new person, sounds like a new life, by changing the way you think. So then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Are you ready to change the way you think? Are you ready to change the way you think? Because God's plans are good. This man simply obeyed. This man's transformation, you know, didn't end with just the physical healing. He was approached by people, the religious sector, and they said, what are you doing? What are you doing carrying your mat? You know, so there will be people that will approach you and question you about your healing because you start to, you begin to act different, talk different. You begin to do different things. There will be people, but this man, he held on to his healing and he said, well, the man who healed me told me to get my mat. I'm going to walk in my healing. He stood in his healing. He did not waver. 
He declared it and accredited it to Jesus. This shows the impact of our transformation on our relationships and our interactions. So the question for us today is, do we want to be healed? Do we want to be made whole? That's my heart. Are we willing to confront our excuses? Are we willing to take responsibility possibly where we have contributed? And are we really willing to step into the unknown? James uh, chapter one says, don't merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself forgets as soon as he walks away. Putting our faith in action is taking the seed that God has planted in our life and letting it take root. Start to act in the way that God has designed for us because we trust him with every part of our life. Every decision, every change begins with a decision. Would you bow your heads with me? Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. We just want to sit in your presence and just acknowledge that you are here among us. I even just sense that there are some people that their head is low for whatever reason. It's useless. It's, I've tried whatever it is. And I just see the Lord lifting your head underneath your chin and saying, do you want to get well? Because I'm here. I want to be a part of the process of you getting well. Do you want to be whole? And God, our answer, my answer is yes. I want every layer, as the years go by, I want you to reveal more and more of the healing that's available to me. I just wanna pause here for a second and as our heads are bowed and eyes are closed, there may be some people in here who do not know the savior, the healer personally. And we can't leave here without that because we cannot do this life alone and without the Savior. And so if that's you, I wanna, I wanna offer a moment of prayer. If you have never given your life to Jesus or you want to come back into relationship with him, would you raise your hand today so I can pray with you? Amen, I see that hand, amen. Would your church family, and even if you did not raise your hand, would you pray this with me? Father God, I come before you and I thank you for healing. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to come to earth, sin not, don't, and not sin. <laughs> thank you for your grace. Um, and die on the cross and be resurrected three days later. I ask you to come live in my heart. Lead me. Guide me. Heal me, strengthen me, in Jesus' name, I pray, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. I just wanna, Mike, I wanna invite you to join me. I just really felt led to pray for those who want to be made whole. That it goes beyond, it, it could be physical, yes, but it goes beyond that. And I'm a firm believer in praying for one another. And so I want to invite us as we, as we enter into this worship song, Caitlin, if you'll lead us. If that's you, I invite you to stand to your feet. If this is you that wants to be made whole, would you stand with us as we worship? And you know what? Let's just have all of us stand. And, it, and if that is you where you're, where you're crying out to God, I want to be made whole. I am done. I draw the line in the sand. I want to pick up my mat and walk. As we, as we sing this song, 
I encourage you to open your mouth and ask God for your healing. I also encourage you to thank God for your healing. I also encourage you to partner with God and say, God, I will do my part in this healing. And, and as you do, you can lift your hands to receive something. And I believe supernaturally, the Lord is gonna do a work here today. Would you sing this with me? Rain came, wind blew, my house is built on you. I'm safe with you. about that question and Jesus kept going back to the simplicity of it do you want to be well how many of you want to be well if you want to be well and that's you just put your hands over your heart right now because I believe the Lord's going to meet you right here in this space thank you Lord thank you God would you meet every person that has some yes. brokenness in their life God and they realize that they know it maybe it's brokenness in their body Maybe it's brokenness in their soul. Maybe it's brokenness in their mind, God. But today they realize that something is missing. And we need a special touch just from you, God. Lord, would you come and just invade this space? Yes. Not just this room, but the space of their heart, God. With their hands over their heart, would you invade that space? Yes. And flood it with your love, your grace, your peace your mercy, and most of all, your healing touch, God. We thank you that by your stripes, we are healed yes. and made whole, yes. God. Wherever we're deficient, Lord, you make up the difference. Jesus, I pray for healing physically for people right now. There's some in this room that you're, you've been going through it. Just like you said, man, you've been having a bad day for a long time. And I'm believing by faith that it's about to get better. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. That God is doing something powerful. That he is the same God. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same healing that he did back then, he's doing today. God, thank you that you are the healer, Father. Thank you. We trust you. We believe in you. And we know that you are for us. And if you are for us, who could be against us? Amen. And if you are with us, what could ever stand against us, God? Nothing. Because you won't fail. Yes. Christ, you are my 
firm foundation and I put my trust and my hope you, in you, in you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We'll go ahead and grab the hand of somebody next to you. I want to bless you as we go. I want to remind you, if you said yes to Jesus today on your way out today, our ushers have a yes packet. Inside of that is some information about the decision that you made to follow Jesus today, and as well as some next steps to help you get pointed in the right direction. One of the next steps would be come back at two o'clock today and join us for Flow Track. It'll help you to develop some good spiritual habits in your life to help you grow, to become more like Jesus. Jesus, amen. I want to bless you guys as we go. Well, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and to be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his face towards you and give you peace. I pray this blessing over you, your children, and your children's children, that the grace, mercy, and peace of God would follow you all the days of your life, that he would cause you and I to be an extension of his hands in his feet, in all we say, in all we do. May we walk in the healing and wholeness that only Jesus could bring. In his name, I pray this blessing over you. Amen. 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 Hey, God bless you guys. Thanks for coming today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you real soon.